Chairs No Lighting, episode number 370. Earl Hagen and the music of Mayberry. Two Chairs No Lighting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's. Drop by a Weaver's department store and check out some of the cool things they got there. They just got in some Mayberry Dampity badges. Now, these aren't the fancy $60 badges, but they're the cool, you know, $10 badges that you can wear and even give to your kids and nephews and everything. They'll love these. Mayberry Deputy Badge. If you don't want that, head over and check out the Mayberry Trivia Book by Scott Hopkins. 1,500 trivia questions all over at WeaversDepartmentStore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of this episode, number 370, is Sarah Blaine. So thank you, Sarah, for your donation, and thank you for joining me here in Mayberry once again, hopefully you've uh, listened to at least one or two of the uh, previous 369 episodes of the podcast that we've done, and you've enjoyed yourself, and you've enjoyed spending some time just talking about the Andy Griffith Show uh, like we do every week here on Two Chairs No Waiting, uh, and, uh, and I hope that's why you're showing up, and if it's your first time, welcome to Mayberry. We're glad to have you. So we're going to be talking on this episode about Earl Hagen. Now, if you don't know who Earl Hagen is, he's the guy who wrote the theme song for the Andy Griffith show. Now, you know that one here. Uh, let me just play real quick. It normally doesn't stutter like that, <laughs> but you know, the theme song, everybody knows the same theme song, but how much do we know about some of the music that was played on the Andy Griffith show and uh, created, created for the Andy Griffith show? It wasn't just played there. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be discussing some of that this evening. So I hope you're gonna enjoy this. Uh, let me uh, let me just go ahead and get this thing rolling because this first little clip, our first little conversation uh, uh, that starts off talking about this and Earl Hagen, comes from a man you might recognize, Howard Sprague himself, Jack Dotson. He says the music was superb. That's what he says. Most people never even talk uh, very much about Earl Hagen. Uh, though I've always wanted to. That's what, that's what Jack Dotson's talking about. He said, I never had the chance to express to Hagen how brilliant I thought his work was. And that's coming from Jack Dotson. There was no TV theme more popular than the one musical director Earl Hagen wrote and produced for the Andy Griffith Show. Okay. The talented musician and composer Hagen, he scored well over 3,000 episodes of TV series, including uh, Gummer Pyle, USMC, That Girl, The Mod Squad, uh, Dick Van Dyke Show, and Mike Hammer. You've heard that one. Definitely heard Mike Hammer's thing. That's just to name a few of the many TV series episodes that he actually did. Hagen says, uh, talking about the Andy Griffith Show theme, he said it was just an idea. Hagen said, you know, when he was asked about the genesis of the opening mel medley, melody for the uh, Andy Griffith Show theme, he says the whistling and the theme happened at the same time. Uh, Hagen's idea was to stay simple, keep it a simple track. He said, uh, I'd done a lot of uh, elaborate themes, but it seemed to me that the whistling would be, you know, something right for Andy because that was his kind of character. He was the guy, you know, who would, uh, whistle something. That's Andy, Andy Taylor, Andy Griffith. You know, how long did it take to create the theme? Uh, you know, Hagen recalls, well, yeah, I should be playing the theme while I'm talking about this. Shouldn't I? So let me put that in the background just a little bit. So here's the theme we all know and love. How long did it take him to create this theme? Well, he recalls he wrote the whole thing in about an hour. Can you believe that? After that, he went into the studio and he, he said, I hired a little rhythm combo, just a, a bass drum and a guitar, and we did the demo the, that same day. He did it all in one day. That's amazing. The whistling was done on the demo and later for the finished theme by Hagen himself. Okay. It was the first and last time I whistled anything, is what he says. <laughs> uh, surely he really whistled going around the house and stuff. But Anyway, that was the only time he professionally whistled, I suppose. Uh, the theme was just one small part of, uh, of, of what made the Andy Griffith show a, 
stand out from the music, the music that was written for it. Hagen, uh, he was hired by Sheldon Leonard and was the man responsible for scoring each episode, every episode of The Andy Griffith Show, and overseeing the recording sessions. The idea of a musical director being allowed to operate for, for a long time or any length of time without supervision uh, would not even be considered in today's atmosphere on television. In the early days of television, more attention was paid to the music because the freedom uh, uh, there was a freedom from the constraints of supervision. Uh, in that era, back in the 60s, the sponsors owned the shows. They owned the television series themselves. And they let the talent do what they thought was right. Okay, In the Andy Griffith Show and other Sheldon Leonard series, Hagen was left alone to do what he did the best. Quote, he says, I worked for Sheldon Leonard for over 16 years. No, I'm sorry, 17 years, which is over 16, <laughs> is what he says. And uh, he said, no one ever once did he ever come into a recording session. Talking about Sheldon Leonard. Another stroke from uh, Hagen's musical brush involved the creation of musicals themes that became the signatures for some of the characters. Now, you guys uh, may have heard these before. Uh, there were two of them. For Barney, for instance, uh, he had two themes. One was the lawman, which I believe is probably this one. That's probably called the one he called the lawman. Uh, we know it as the manhunt. Okay, so it could be that one. And he said he had another one uh, when he was acting uh, bigger than life and stuff. This is this one. You've heard this. Let me turn it up a little for you. Yeah, when Barney's walking across the street. Can't you just see him sniffing? Yeah, well, Ange. <laughs> the music is just amazing, isn't it? Brings about those emotions. He says the other one was one I guess you'd call the twitchy theme. But you know, I don't know if this one isn't kind of twitchy. Uh, and I'm not sure which music that might be. Uh, because uh, we did have this one he also done for Barney. That was Barney's hoedown. I guess this could be it. That's why he's talking about Barney's twitchy theme. So that's called Barney's Hoedown, Earl Hagen. Uh, so, uh, and he goes on to say here that his job, uh, as Hagen puts it, was to let the show dictate the music. You know, the, the show is where he got the music from, the uh, whatever was happening in the show. As good as he was, Hagen was sometimes asked to do, be bad. Oh, in episode, <laughs> this is an awesome one. You guys have heard this theme a few times, okay? Because in episode number 72, episode number 72, y'all know which one that is? I'll give you a hint here as we play the music. The Mayberry Band is what it's called. It featured the town's musical <laughs> marchers. There they are, stumbling over their own instruments. Ironically, Seasoned professionals were being paid to imitate rank amateurs. Hagen's responsibility was to make sure that the drama did not become a melodrama. Hagen explained, and this is a quote from him, you had to have really good musicians and you had to tell them that you wanted it to be bad, but that you didn't want it to be burlesque. We did an arrangement of Stars and Stripes Forever that was so funny that Andy, who was playing the tuba, fell apart when we did the take. What made it funny wasn't only that the band was bad and didn't play well, but one of the guys got a bar behind the rest and stayed there. <laughs> got behind him by a bar and stayed there, which is what probably really would happen in a bad band. <laughs> so you guys hear that every week here on this podcast, that little bit of musical history the Stars and Stripes Forever by the Mayberry Band. That's our theme song here on Two Chairs No Waiting. Two of the more prominent uh, uses of music inside the show included uh, the, uh, the harmonica, which I don't have a sample of, but it also included, uh, let me play this, a little bit from the Dillards. So 
this is just a little sample of the Dillards. So it included the Dillards. The Dillards were the Darlings, of course, and uh, they were a popular folk group back in the 60s who did their own arrangements. But one member of the Darlings uh, was not a Dillard. The patriarch, Briscoe Darling himself, he played his favorite musical instrument, which was a jug. You guys remember that. Uh, since there were no synthesizers back in the 1960s, Hagen improvised. He said basically, quote, we got a big bottle and one guy, one of the guys blew in it. Like, <laughs> we, all, we all do that with a Coke bottle. We've all done that. That was the sound you heard from Briscoe's jug when he was holding it. So that's where it came from. And then the harmonica that Barney played. You guys heard Barney play his harmony. You know, he played it for Jimmy the Loaded Goat and everything. Well, if it's important to you, I just wanted you to know that Hagen said it was actually overdubbed. So the music was actually played by a studio musician named Tommy Morgan. A little trivia. There you go. The harmonica was played by Tommy Morgan. Another piece of uh, popular music written by Hagen and uh, uh, that was uh, the Mayberry Union High fight song. So let's hear a little of that. Okay, so it was the Mayberry Union High fight song that Hagen uh, had written, and it was used for the climax of the CBS special honoring the Andy Griffith show. Jack Dodson said it was one of the most one of the moments of the special that he will never forget. That's what he said. And who would? He said, Jack Dotson said this. He said, I really loved getting up and getting to sing the Mayberry Union High song. It was such a great song. You couldn't have a better high school song than that. So this is the one from the original series. And then this is the band singing it at the special. Victory is yours, well not, we'll hit the line for points every time. The orange and blue will try, 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 try. And when the victory's won, you'll be our favorite son. Proud waves your banner in the sky. Mayberry Union <laughs> oh, and and like I said, Jack Dodson said he really loved getting up to sing that. Uh, it's such a great song. You couldn't have a better high school song than that. That's what Jack Dodson was quoted as saying. Of course, some of the other music we heard on the show was from Bobby Fleet and his band with the beat. We've all heard those. Bobby Fleet and Bobby Fleet and his band with the beat. Uh, so Bobby and his band uh, made several trips to Mayberry. But the band, however, will not be doing a reunion special because <laughs> it was just really composed of actors playing the roles of musicians, not actually their instruments. Uh, and Hagen says uh, that was done by studio professionals, uh, studio musicians. Uh, the band members you saw on screen were character actors typed for the parts of musicians, but they didn't actually play. So when you see them on the screen, that Bobby Fleet and his band with the beat, that's not actually them playing. Uh, one actor who was a gener genuine article was Andy Griffith. Quote, he used to sing most of his numbers right on stage, Hagen said. Those numbers were often recorded live. Andy and Hagen, Andy, who Hagen said was very knowledgeable about music, chose the numbers himself. So when Andy was singing on the screen, it was him that picked out those musical numbers that he would sing. Now, of course, then there was uh, Don Knotts. We already know, uh, we know, we know, we know what he did. Uh, Don Knotts, now th this is, I don't have the uh, scene. He's, he's going to talk here about the song festers. But, you know, since we're talking about Don Knotts and Barney and singing, I've just got to let this, uh, this play. We'll listen to this as we go. And, uh, but Don Knotts, he shared memories of his musical skills. Between takes, he said, we'd sing and harmonize and we'd work it into the show. You'll see it at the beginning of some shows. And one time I was playing around and I hit a bad note. Andy just glanced at me and we left it at that. 
one thing I liked about the show was we didn't uh, we didn't lean on things. We wouldn't lean on a thing like that. We'd uh, do them and let them go. He says, Don Knotts does, the song festers was difficult to do because I had to intentionally sing off key. And that's tough to do. So everybody picture in their mind, Barney. Don Knotts, what a classic he is. If you can't picture that in your mind, you don't watch the show enough because that is absolutely amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is just some of the amazing, amazing music that has been on the Andy Griffith Show over the years. And we want to thank Earl Hagen for the amazing uh, contribution to what making Mayberry what it is to us all uh, over the years. That's what he did. Everything from Ellie's theme, which you... That music there, you know, to Aunt B's theme, her music, when you think of Aunt B. Just a, it evokes emotion. These amazing little bits of music that added to and made Mayberry what it is. Whether it's happy, which this is, or serious or sad like Aunt B's was or just fun Earl Hagen ladies and gentlemen was the man who brought it all to us and was able to make a smile laugh and evoke emotion just by the amazing skill as a musician ladies and gentlemen I would love to hear from you I'd love to hear what you think about the music of the Andy Griffith show Give me a call at 888-684-8415. Or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. Or just drop by Two Chairs No Waiting. All three of those ways, any of them, you can get to me. You can leave a note at Two Chairs No Waiting. I would love to hear from you. And what did you think about the amazing music that Earl Hagen was able to produce for the Andy Griffith Show and the many other series that he did as well? So, folks, I hope you enjoyed this little trip through some of the music of Mayberry. And we'll see you next time right here on Two Chairs No Way.